Before we get to the story of several cases of large-scale black mob violence, some of which are directed at students at Salisbury State University in little old Salisbury, Maryland, why don't we take a second to remember Gene Cleary? Gene Cleary is the one who inspired the Cleary Act, which is the guide for reporting crime in and around college campuses around the country. It was 1986. Gene Cleary was a student at Lehigh University, which is supposed to be in a bucolic university in the middle of nowhere. Lots of trees, lots of nice old buildings, lots of nice mellow students who say hello to each other as they pass each other in the uh, college mall. Gene had a couple of bro older brothers and sisters that went to Tulane University in New Orleans, but the parents did not want to send Gene there because they'd heard that co-eds and other people were being murdered in and around the campus of Tulane University in New Orleans. We've, we've, doc we've documented a lot of black and white crime in New Orleans on this channel and in my books. So anyway, Gene was just a regular old co-ed student at Lehigh University. When this dude, I think his name's Joe Henry, um, he was upset because he just lost a close election to be the president of the Black Student Union at Lehigh. So he went out drinking that night. Later that, and when he was done drinking, he went to Jean's dorm room where he beat her, raped her, bit her, choked her to death with a wire, did all sorts of other nasty business to her where she was kind of unrecognizable. His, his guilt was kind of an open and shut case. But then the parents found out that there had been more, more than three dozen examples of really nasty violence directed against students, many of whom were black, the violators, not the violatees. So they sued the school, won a lawsuit, and inspired a law that, called the Cleary Act which says campuses have to report violence or a crime in and around the campus. That, you know, and, and everybody is violate, is, com, is complying with the spirit, the letter of the law, but a lot of places do not comply with the spirit. I'd point you to the, the campus police website, Salisbury University, and I'll let you decide whether it is easy or not for parents, prospective parents or students or people just like us to see the level of criminality that exists in the campus and off the campus. Why don't we take this to see how the violence is kind of ignored, denied, condoned, excused, even encouraged and even lied about. Why don't we take a look at this, this report from a local TV station in Salisbury, Maryland, where they report the violence, but we're going to see in a second how dramatically they minimize it. Three assaults around Salisbury University in a relatively short stretch of time. 47 ABC's Danny Bozzini spoke with SU students and Salisbury police to find out more about their plan of action. Over the past two weekends, three assaults have occurred against Salisbury University students near the university's campus, leaving some students surprised and others a little worried. I live off campus and one of the assaults happened like right in front of my house pretty much, so it was pretty scary and concerning. If there's any assaults, it's probably like once, maybe like in a semester, it maybe, but uh, three back to back to back, that's definitely uh, wild. All three assaults took place right off SU's main campus in the late night and early morning hours. According to Salisbury Police, the most recent incident happened around 2 a.m. Sunday on Bateman Street, which runs through the center of SU's East Campus. A female student was repeatedly punched and kicked on the ground, allegedly by a group of non-SU students. Similar to the assault that happened two weekends ago, when a group of students were leaving a party and got into a violent altercation with a group of non-SU students. The Salisbury Police Department has teamed up with SU Police to help with the investigations and provide extra patrol around the area. The plan going forward is to make sure that we have extra patrols in that area, whether it's on bicycles, whether the police officers are on foot. We definitely plan on having additional patrols over there as we work in conjunction with the police department at SU. So far, police have arrested one adult and five minors related to the most recent assault on Sunday. Captain Rich Kaiser tells 47ABC 
They are close to arresting two other individuals and maybe more from the previous assault thanks to surveillance footage. Despite the abnormal number of assaults that have occurred in such a short period of time, students say they still feel safe on campus, but plan on being a little more vigilant. Danny Bozzini, 47, ABC. Now, in regard to the third assault incident that occurred this past weekend, SU police are currently investigating that one separately from the other cases. Salisbury Police Captain uh, Rich Kaiser advises traveling in groups, especially if it's late at night. And if you do find yourself in a harmful situation, call police right away. Well, that didn't sound too bad, did it? Just a couple kids blowing off some steam. It's college. Kids do that at college. Didn't you do that at college? No, that was a little different than this. Uh, what really happened in these examples, a couple of co-eds were walking home at night and they came upon a large group of black people. One of the black people smacked the girl in the ass. She turned around. She, he, he hit her in the arm. Then all of a sudden, they were being beaten and all of a sudden, but the, prior to the beating, all the other black people in the group were telling the girls how they were not just going to beat them, but rape them was all in good fun. We had a similar example at the same time, same kind of thing. A couple of girls walking home, a bunch of black people see them. Somebody says something nasty, the girls say something back. All of a sudden, the white girls are on the ground being beaten by a bunch of black people. It was all in good fun. Salisbury is below the Delaware. See, nobody even knows where Delaware is. So you, I wouldn't expect you to know where Salisbury is because that's below Delaware. It's called the Eastern Shore of Maryland. Lots of argy-bargy down there in Salisbury. I don't, I don't know why, but it happens. I mean, 20 miles below, 25 miles below Salisbury earlier this summer, they had a large-scale episode of uh, black mob violence directed at the police. There were like a hundred black people on the streets of Salisbury, fighting, destroying property, defying police. When the cops showed up, they started attacking the cops. That's what the Bayside Gazette says. And of course, uh, that uh, 25, uh, 30 minutes or so east of Salisbury is Ocean City, Maryland. We've done a lot of stories about the Ocean City area and how everybody in Ocean City all of a sudden is surprised their little summer playground is turning into a scene of black mob violence. Massive boardwalk brawl with cops in Ocean City has led to multiple arrests. The fights happened over the weekend and shut down a portion of the boardwalk. WBOC's Tashauna Gaines joins us live in Ocean City. Tashauna, people say the brawl was wild and scary and they say they want something done about it. Witnesses say it was nearly two to three hundred people here on the boardwalk between 7th and 10th Street being disruptive, blocking businesses and fighting with police. It was so bad, witnesses say, some families were jumping the seawall and walking the beach to avoid the melee. A picture taken from a hotel balcony shows a large crowd formed on the boardwalk. Video shows a crowd leaving little room for people passing by. Ronald Hartley is here on vacation and couldn't believe his eyes. Gangs of... Uh young African-American, probably more male than female. They were just being disruptive. They were blocking entrances to stores, and uh, at one time up here at the bathroom building there was probably a group of 200 to 300, and just nobody could get through on the boardwalk. More video shows police arriving on horseback, on foot, and on bicycles. Lindsey Richards with Ocean City Police tells WBOC, Officers were in the area initially making an arrest when a large crowd circled around them and became aggressive. Although another fight took place on the boardwalk just a few weeks ago, Richard says police consider this an isolated incident. Area businesses like Hammerheads were blocked by the crowd. It was a wild experience. I've never seen anything like it before. I don't want to be trapped in the middle of that on my walk home or... And I know some families over here, they couldn't, they didn't want to walk through the boardwalk, so they like jumped over the seawall and walked on the beach just to get around it. Some vacationers we spoke with today have growing safety concerns. They got to change it. You, you, not, you cannot have people coming here paying money to stay and be scared to leave their, you know, their lodging. Richard says police are taking a close look at what took place to determine if an additional police enforcement is needed on the boardwalk. 
12 arrests were made and one person was tased. Of course, all the university administrators going out of the way to tell us these acts are isolated. Students, oh, this never happens in Salisbury. No, no, Salisbury is a regular occasion of black mob violence and black criminality. We did a story last Christmas how a whole bunch of black people at the local mall in Salisbury throwing rocks at people. So the truth is, in Salisbury, small town, out of the way, nowheresville, Salisbury, black mob violence is a regular feature of life there, so regular that everybody just thinks that's normal now. Sometimes people ask me, like, how I ever got on this kick of reporting about black mob violence and how I ever figured out it's not supposed to be normal. Well, uh, I often talk about how when my brother and I were doing a radio show at WDEL, I saw a large-scale episode of the black mob violence directed at Asian students in South Philadelphia High School. 13 Asian students went to the emergency room in one day. Turns out that had been happening every day for years. They went talk talked to the principal. They talked to the superintendent. They told them they just would have to start learning how to get along with black students. The superintendent even put out a, gave them a flyer telling them how to get along with their predators. And she whispered to reporters that the reason that there was so much violence at South Philadelphia High School was because the Asian immigrant students who all they wanted to do was learn. She whispered the Asians were antagonizing the black people. But I think even before that, I kind of had a lot of my buttons reset. When, um, when, I, when I left, uh, when I moved out of California, my first stop was Colorado. I, went, I spent the winter there. I thought I was just going to be snowboarding all winter. This, is, this, was, this was like a couple of weeks before Barack Obama was inaugurated. So I went there and I spent the winter snowboarding. I actually taught snowboarding at uh, Loveland Resort in Colorado. That was kind of interesting. But when, I, when the season was over, um, I decided I was going to write a book about hitchhiking. So I hitchhiked around the country, mostly the middle part of the country. And I called it Redwood to Deadwood, a 53-year-old dude hitchhikes around America, period, again. And I spent all, the, I, did, I tried to stay off the freeways and I was on the, on the, you know, on the highways and the byways and the backways. I met a lot of people, lots and lots of people, very nice people. I mean, people would pick, when you're out there in the heartland, away from the freeway, when you're in places where the next, the clearest, closest Walmart is 125 miles away, People are living a different life out there. I mean, they're writing checks in restaurants. They're picking you up and taking you to, to, to lunch or dinner and very interested in what you're doing. And everybody out there is self-sufficient. Everybody out there is, you know, in the morning they'll get up and maybe they'll fix their own car. and Or then in the afternoon they'll put a new roof on, you know, on their house. And then in the evening they'll go to their computer so they can do some DNA matching for cows and bulls in that, out in their pasture. That's how they roll out there. I mean, if you need a plumber, there is no plumber. The nearest plumber is 100 miles away. So you got to learn, you know, everybody's doing for themselves and everybody, you know, maybe they'll go help their neighbor if their neighbor needs a little plumbing help. That to me is normal. Nobody's looking over their shoulder to see what kind of violence they can get into. Nobody worries about locking their doors at night. That's normal. That's what I discovered on my little sojourn through the heartland of America. So after that was over, I came back to Delaware to, to my brother's house to write that book, Redwood the Deadwood, did very well, thank you. Got a, lot, I tell you. got a lot of attention on NPR, got a lot of attention on the Canadian version of NPR. Everybody thought that was very cool. Some old dude would just go around and, you know, tell stories about what, what he found out there. Um, but really, as soon as I got back here to Delaware, where I hadn't really spent any time in the last 35 years, just a couple of visits every now and then, I mean, really, I was struck right away by this enormous level of black violence, black criminality, and the extent to which people were den in denial, deceit, and delusion about it. I mean, I saw that every day. So we started going, doing talk radio. My, my, I started helping my brother guest host a talk radio show at WDEL, the biggest talker in Delaware. And I mean, that was like my big thing. It was like, hey, what did you guys do to ruin this little town? Why are you so... Why, why, how did black violence and, and how did that become the norm around here? Why are there no families living in this town anymore? Why is everybody so eager to excuse what's happening here? Why? why? 
And everybody looked at me and said, Colin, that's just normal. Well, it's not normal. That's not normal. The stuff happening in Salisbury, Maryland is not normal. Neither is it normal to worry about every second of every day when you go outside or you go shopping or go to the restaurant or go to church or send your kids to school. It's not normal to worry about what makes the black kids angry. 